Now, I'd want you to look at this question here and try to attempt it before checking out my solutions. So you can start now. So the question goes, a curve has equation y is equal to 1 over x plus c. And the line is equation y is equal to cx minus 3, where c is a constant. So in part 1, find the set of values of c for which the curve and the line meet. So this is another question involving the intersection of a curve and a line. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to combine the two equations. So we have y is equal to 1 over x plus c and we also have the equation y is equal to cx minus 3. This means that since they're all in terms of y in terms of x and c, so I'll have 1 over x plus c is equal to cx minus 3. Remember, 1 over x plus c is equivalent to y, and cx minus 3 is also equivalent to y. So these two expressions are equal. I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So this side times x and this side times x. So if I multiply x times 1 over x, I get 1. And x times c, I get cx. x times cx, I get cx squared. And x times minus 3, I get minus 3x. And from here, I'm going to subtract cx from both sides and 1 from both sides so that we are left with a 0 on the left side. So I have cx squared minus 3x on the right side already. But by subtracting cx from both sides, I get minus cx. And by subtracting 1 from both sides, I get minus 1. So I can rearrange this. So I'll be having 0 is equal to cx squared. And here I can factor out the x since it's common. So it's plus, and I factor out the x, I have minus 3 minus c remaining in the bracket. And x is factored out minus 1. So I now have this quadratic equation combining the two equations, the equation of the curve and the equation of the line. Now, since according to the question, they say they want us to find the set of values of C for which the curve and the line meet. Now, the curve and the line can meet where B squared minus 4AC is either greater than or equal to 0. Remember, if B squared minus 4AC is greater than 0, it means they meet at two distinct points. And if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, it means the line is a tangent, so they meet at one single point. So we're going to use b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. So here, a is c, b is the coefficient of x, that's minus 3 minus c, and c in this sense, is minus 1. That's the constant term here. So if we do b squared minus 4ac, then that will be minus 3 minus c squared minus 4 of c and of minus 1. This has to be greater than or equal to 0. So simplifying, expanding the brackets, minus 3 minus c squared, I should get 9 plus 6c plus c squared. Then 4 times c minus 4 times c times minus 1 gives us plus 4c is greater than or equal to 0. Just simplifying again and rearranging, I'll eventually come out with c squared plus 10c plus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to look for the critical values and we find the critical values by equating the quadratic expression to zero on the left side. 
So x, uh, factorizing this, c squared plus 10c plus 9, I'll be having obviously two brackets here, then a c here and a c here, because these two first terms in each bracket should give us a, a product of c squared of the first term. Then for the factors of 9, I'm going to use 9 and 1. And these are the two that gives us a sum of 10. So it's a plus here. So C plus 9 and C plus 1. That's how we factorize this. So for the critical values, if we equate either, um, either factor to 0, then C comes out as minus 9 or minus 1. So we are solving this quadratic inequality to get the set of val values of C as required by the question. So what we will now need is uh, maybe have a sketch of the quadratic graph representing this inequality. So I have here C and this is going to be um, a U-shaped quadratic graph. Okay, says the coefficient of c squared is 1. So greater than or equal to 0 means positive. Here we've got minus 9 and minus 1. So the graph is positive above the c-axis for the values of c from uh, minus 9 going to the left. So c is less than or equal to minus 9 or for values of c that are greater than or equal to minus 1. So these two are the set of values of c for which the curve and the line meet. That's the answer to part 1. Let's go on to part 2. So I'm going to clear off all this working. So I will just remain with what's on the screen right now because I'm going to need it for part 2. So according to part 2, it says the line is a tangent to the curve for two particular values of C. For each of the values, find the x-coordinate of the point at which the tangent touches the curve. So the two particular values of C that we're talking about are minus 9 and minus 1. We had already obtained them um, in our working on part 1. So C is equal to minus 9 or C is equal to minus 1. So they say the line is a tangent to the curve for these particular values of C. So we're going to substitute starting with c equal to minus 9. So let me clear this off. So we're substituting c is equal to minus 9 into this equation here. So 0 is equal to minus 9 x squared plus minus 3 minus minus 9, that's plus 9 then, of x minus 1. So 0 is equal to minus 9x squared plus 6x minus 1. This can also be written as dividing both sides by minus 1 is 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equal to 0. Which is a perfect square which can easily be factorized to give us 3x minus 1 and 3x minus 1 from factorizing this. So if we equate both factors to 0, we get a third for the value of x. So a third twice. So that's the first value of x. That's the first x coordinate here. x is equal to a third. And then if we substitute c is equal to minus 1, then we'll be having 0 is equal to minus x squared plus minus 3 
minus c so that's minus 3 minus minus 1 so plus 1 of x minus 1 so this is going to give us minus x squared minus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0 dividing both sides by minus 1 and rearranging we get x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0 gain a perfect square x plus 1 x plus 1 so if we equate x plus 1 to 0 then x comes out as minus 1 and twice so the second x value required by the question is x is equal to minus 1 so these are the two solutions required by this question.